I'm Anthony Valeri, Director of Investment Management in Wealth and Fiduciary Services. The U.S. Treasury reached its statutory debt limit in January of this year. This process has occurred many times over the years, but always with lots of media focus, even if varying degrees of political wrangling. Given the difficulty in electing a Speaker of the House, there is concern that the upcoming debt limit fight will be more contentious here in 2023. Today, we'll take a close look at what that debt limit negotiation means, how to interpret it as an investor. Well, the Treasury employed extraordinary measures in late January of this year to conserve cash and fully fund government operations in response to reaching the debt ceiling. These extraordinary measures have no immediate impact to investors, but at some point, these measures will be exhausted and the Treasury will reach what is called the X date. That's the point at which the Treasury will have to choose which expenses to pay, which not to pay, or simply delay. The media will suggest the, ED, the X date is the date when the Treasury will default on its debt obligations, but that is highly unlikely. The answer is more complex and nuanced than that. Treasury receives, and it's important to note, revenue on a daily basis and will likely prioritize those debt interest payments after reaching the X date, as well as prioritizing things like Social Security. We'll touch on more of that in a moment. In 2023, estimates for when the X date will be reached range from late June through the end of August, so still several months away, but nonetheless an important development. What is the market reaction to all of this? Well, one way to gauge the market's opinion of creditworthiness is to look at credit default swaps on sovereign debt, or CDS for short. CDS is a fancy Wall Street term for what is essentially an insurance contract. Here we show the cost to insure 1 million worth of U.S. Treasuries against a default over a one-year horizon. You can see that it spiked higher here in early 2023 in response to the debt limit being reached. But at only 65 basis points or 0.65%, it is very low and suggests very limited probability of default. In short, it's saying it will cost only $6,500 to insure 1 million against default. If this were perceived to be a true default situation, the cost would easily be 9, 10% or more. Note that the cost to insure against default spiked higher in prior episodes of the debt limit in 2011, 2013, and 2015, but in each of those cases, that cost fell sharply lower immediately after. Speaking of those prior periods, here's a chart of the one month T-bill yield around the X date in prior years. In 2013, the one month T-bill yield jumped from essentially zero to 0.35%. Again, like our CDS example, this shows a limited amount of fear over repayment, but sparked equity market volatility nonetheless. In 2011, U.S. Treasuries were downgraded from AAA to AA plus by Standard & Poor's as a result of failing to raise the debt limit ahead of the X date. Ironically, longer term Treasury prices increased and yields fell in the days after that as investors sought a safe haven from equity market volatility. In short, investors know that the Treasury would very likely come through and make good on payment. There are severe consequences of not doing so. A delay in payment or a brief payment interruption would mean that investors would likely require higher interest costs in the future on all treasuries to compensate for such risks. That is something that would be extremely cost costly to the nation's finances and something the treasury would want to avoid at all costs. Let's put that in perspective and another way to look at interest costs and its impact to the treasury. Uh, here we show total federal revenues and yet the and the interest expense. You can see that although interest expense is one of the larger expenses for the treasuries, it still makes up only a small portion of overall revenue. So there's a lot of room for the treasury to prioritize debt service, and it will also likely prioritize social security payments added, as it has done in the past when exceeding the X date. However, when you add in other large expenses like healthcare, defense, the treasury won't be able to meet all of its expenses and will have to choose. In the past, this has occasionally resulted in a partial government shutdown where workers are furloughed and were not paid. This would have a negative impact to the economy without those docket dollars circulating, even if it's temporary. And in a year where we're having where slow growth is likely to be a factor, it could be enough to push the economy into recession. We ultimately believe a resolution to this latest debt ceiling crisis will be found, 
and default on treasuries easily averted. But given the precedent of prior partial government shut shutdowns, it's not without economic risks. We'll continue to update you on the debt limit as it gets closer over the coming months. I'm Anthony Valeri. Thanks for joining.